Hello again and welcome to the Amazons. Today on the program, we are talking family. This time, it is the added responsibility of having children take care of their parents when the parents are old. In this part of the world, especially here in Nigeria, children are thought and raised early enough to know that the parents become their own responsibility financially when they are old. You hear things like, I am taking care of you now, I'm sending you to school, so that when I become old, you will take care of me in return. Now, the children have not only been given the added responsibility of taking care of their parents when the parents are old, they also have to think of the family that they will raise and also take care of when the time comes. So now, are we placing an added stress on our children when we tell them early enough that my obligations and duties to you are just so that you can return same to me when I'm old. This is the discussion on the Amazons today. We know a lot of families also grapple with this situation. But here on the Amazons, we don't just talk alone. We bring in experts who also give us their own divergent views on the topics that we treat. Today will not be different. We'll see you again after this short break as we discuss this topic on the Amazons today. Welcome back to the program. Amazons, we are talking here today on the need or why parents or should children be given the added responsibility of taking care of the financial needs of their aged parents when the time comes. My name is Aisha Faludi and I am Lilian Imoni and you're welcome to the Amazons. Remember you can be a part of this converse conversation by joining us on our social media handles. On Instagram it's the Amazons official NG, on YouTube it's the Amazons NG and on Twitter it's the Amazons NG. Lilian I mean, this is, this is a round table discussion, you know, um, in some family homes. Children teach their parents early enough. I, for once, have told my daughter, and she said, Mommy, what are your retirement plans? I say, You are. <laughs> you are. I said, Seriously? I say, Yeah, and I mean it. I mean, I, have, I did the same for my parents, so I expect my daughter to also, you know, begin to take care of me when I'm old. And more so, I mean, in, in Nigeria of today, where, where is that extra to put aside for your retirement? Mm. When all of these expenses, you know, you have to send your children to school, you have to, things that you never really thought about. Whilst we were growing up, the electricity was almost 24 hours. You know, health, the healthcare system was free. School, you know, education was, you know, as good as free, but now everything just costs money. So where is the mother or the father going to put anything aside for when they retire? I like your point of view. I do not 100% agree with you. It's <laughs> but, a discussion. Yes, yeah. you see, but uh, because I believe that it's not just enough to train your children to become your insurance policy. There are other ways that the children can take care of their parents, um, either by maintaining frequent contacts, visiting them often, encourage them to go for social functions and gatherings, or even consider you know, to hire a caregiver. And that's a cost there already. Raising a child on its own, it's not easy on a, on a parent. It is a duty, it is an obligation, it is a responsibility. Mm -hmm. That has to be reciprocated by the child. Generation it should not even be, you know, the, the parents should not even have to ask. Mm -hmm. They should know that their duty to their parents, it is also div a divine commandment. You know, so when God was saying that take care of your children and uh, take care of your parents, oh, he yeah. came with a promise. Mm. Do you understand? So for you, if I had to do that for my parents, mm. I, I do not imagine a child would be, uh, 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 would, would just not think that they owe 
their parents that duty. Now you are That's taking uh, a great step in the right direction because this goes back to proper parenting. You're daily reminding your daughter of what you did for your parents. So she's already taking it into her mind that yes, I have to take care of my, my, my mother. But I think that the children should be given a choice or allowed a choice because it puts pressure on them and also exerts negative energy because in the long run, they neglect themselves. They neglect some things in their lives too. So yeah, yes. it, it is not, you know, parenting, we, there's no manual to it, you sure. know, you, it, whatever works for you but I also think that as parents you see you do not excuse your child or your children from that basic need and responsibility I hear some of my friends will say look I don't want to be the uh, I don't want I to don't be, want you to be my breadwinner yeah, so don't I don't want to mm -hmm. ask you for this I don't want to ask you for that just concentrate on your family mm -hmm. and I also know parents who are also taking care of their grandchildren okay. till today so where do you want a child to be independent where do you want the child to also learn to be to take on responsibilities that should ordinarily maybe there's a certain yes. age but maybe as they grow maybe give them some time after a while, they know that, okay, I've gotten to this age where... What is the age? <laughs> maybe, well, we don't know the age yet, but I'm just saying. So the pressure is not too much on the children. All right, so it's, it's a discussion that uh, you can also join in. It's, um, it's on our social media handles. You can send on your feedback and your opinion about what this is about. We'll call for a break now and we'll be back shortly. If you expect so much from your children, especially these days, you will be disappointed. I think, well, I do agree that the child should want to take care of the parent, but I think it should be something natural. Children should because it is commanded by God. And of course, it comes with a promise. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days will be long. If a child that honors his parents or his or her parents, is putting blessings on him or herself. Welcome back, and if you are just joining us, it's the Amazons. Remember that you can stay connected with us on our social media handles. On Instagram, it's the Amazons Official NG. On YouTube, it's the Amazons NG. And on Twitter, it's the Amazons NG. We have our guests who have joined us and they'll be sharing their experience and you know, we'll have a robust conversation. So I'd like to introduce Mr. Derek Kentabe. You're welcome to the show. Mr. Derek Kentabe is the executive director of Yanga Games. Am I correct, sir? That's correct. And we have Mr. Taya Orekoya. He is the MD of CITC consultant and the global president of PL Awards Nigeria. You're welcome to the studio today. Thank you very much. So straight to you with the questions, because I know you're <laughs> ready. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. You, you're listening when we were our opening remarks. I, I, do, I, I 100%, I'm, I'm convinced that children, without even asking, should take care, have that responsibility of taking care of their parents when they are old. I don't know, I mean, uh, men are known not to be as... Demanding. Not as demanding, as caring as women should. Mm. But in your case, it might be different. Mr. Orekoya, I'd like to start with you. What do you think? Well, thank you very much, Aisha. Um, well, I, I was listening uh, most... Uh, Interestingly, on the conversation, uh, well, I, I like to tell you honestly that, um, you see, if you expect so much from your children, especially these days, you will be disappointed. Absolutely. That's the honest truth, and I'll tell you why. This generation of, of children are different from our generation. That's the honest truth. They seem to tend to take after the generation of children in advanced or developed countries. I'm not saying that I don't agree that children should take care of their parents, far from it. Children should because it is commanded by God. And of course, it comes with a promise. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days will be long. If a child that honors his parents or his or her parents, is putting blessings on him or herself. That's the honest truth. Mm. However, I think there is the need for our children to further understand this. Because the truth is, 
like a friend of mine used to say, uh, Kola Olainka, the GM British Airways, he says, our generation is what he calls the sandwich generation. Sandwich as in, we took care of our parents and we're still taking care of them. We're taking care of our children. So we are in the middle. Now, these children, they tend to believe that, look, I mean, yes, I mean, I have a life to live. I have to take care of myself and all that. However, it is important for them to be trained along the line to realize that they have this responsibility. Exactly. Biblically, <laughs> spiritually, in terms of blessings to them. But I'm giving a warning here or a caveat that a parent that tends to rely on that might be disappointed. Okay, so when you say that we did it for our parents, we are still yeah. doing it for our parents and also yeah. still taking care of our children. Yes. And that we, were, we were raised that way. Yes. We were made to understand early enough that it's going to be our responsibility. Right. So if we now excuse our children from also realizing and we are quick to adapt. Well, we, no, they are, they are, the generation is different too. They are not like us. It is enabling them to do that which is not right. Well, well, let me say this. What I would rather say is train a child in the way it should go. When it gets old, they will not depart from it. Yes, let them know that it's a responsibility with blessings. However, in your own interest, prepare for yourself. <laughs> Prepare for your future <laughs> so that you are not disappointed. I mean, that's the honest truth. Okay, honest let's, truth. let's hear from Mr. Kentibe. Um, I have a slightly different perspective. Um, I think, well, I do agree that the child should want to take care of the parent, but I think it should be something natural. But like he had said previously, it's very important. It depends on how you train the child to begin with. Because if not, like he said, you'll be disappointed. So you have to start from the very early stages and train the child. Training can be just from example. You train your child to understand, you know, to be given, to be empathic, to be compassionate. Just having that, you know, if the child grows up that way, when they get older, it will be natural that, okay, I need to help not just my parents, but also to help society and help the people around me. So naturally, mother and father would most likely come first and they would take care of their parents that way. You know, I would not agree with you, right? Mm. <laughs> because I feel like there's so much pressure on the children. And that's why you see children these days, they want to do the unthinkable, unimaginable, just to make sure that they cater for their parents. So these things, um, I would say, shouldn't the children be allowed a choice to fill in those shoes of their parents? Because of this pressure, they do a lot of things just to take care of their parents. And the parents of these days do not question them. They don't ask them, where did you get money from to buy this new car? Where did you get money from to start this new business? They just feel, that's why I said, an entitlement mentality. Now, you have not even trained your child in the way you should go, but you already have that expectation that I did for my parents, so you should do for me. They don't care, they just want to get it. Keep bringing it without asking questions. No honest um, source of income. Oh, you bought a new car for me. You know, these days, all over social media, you see a boy say, uh, puts a video, oh, he just came back from America after five years, and he buys a car for the parents. And they're like, oh, my dear, one more. You don't even know where this boy made his money from. That pressure is where I stand, and that we should be careful with the way we have these expectations of our children, so we do not push them to do the unthinkable and unimaginable things. That's where I stand, and that's where I always stand. OK, for me. You see, while we, are, we keep making excuses for our children, the retirement plan of the parents, like I said, when my daughter asked me, mommy, what are your retirement plans? I said, you are. <laughs> How so? Because I've done X, Y, Z. So there's, I didn't have anything to put aside. Mm. I sent you to the best of schools. You've bleed, you, 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 I, I took care of you, you know. I, start, I started listing what I did. So how do you expect that I have you know, the extra to put aside for retirement. Mm. Besides that, we live in a country where there are, there's nothing mm. put in place for, for, for the retired and the aged. Mm. There's no social security, there's no health plan, there's no welfare, there's nothing like healthcare, there's nothing like uh, 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 taking care of the aged in the, in the home. Mm. So if you have to look at all of this, what comes to mind first? I have a family. 
I've given back to a child. I've given back to children. They should step in at this point. If they don't, what happens to me? Mm. Okay, um, Aisha, uh, let me take it from there. And honestly, and I think this is a very hard fact, but it's true that we give everything for our children. But I keep saying it. You see, my, I mean, the way I was brought up, I was brought up to believe that you should take care of your parents and all that. But you see, my, my dad was always saying something when we were young that, look, uh, whatever the child brings, if you like, bring, if you don't, you know, but as far as I'm concerned, I will do my best for you. And that has been my position. My parents, I've had to take good care of them. I did. Even my, uh, my parents' in-law, and I still do today. And my children are aware. So I take them through. They see what I do. With my dad, my, my parents are to buy one car, change the car. My children are made aware and they know. You see, however, I am still saying this. There is a lot of pressure on these children already. And... I will advise any parent that no matter how difficult, put something aside for the rainy day. I, I know it's tough. The environment here, so many things are difficult. But you see, I don't want a decision that one would now be disappointed. I pray not. You understand? Our children, my children, yes, very good. They're doing well, you know. But my advice to parents in a situation like this is, yes, train the children to know and all that, but always do something aside. Either, no matter how little, in spite of the challenges, put something aside in savings, in investments, whether it's stocks, whether it's bonds, because at that time, children might bring, it might not even be sufficient for you to maintain the standard that you want to live. You know, uh, so. what, what is the standard of an old woman or man okay. in, that is already at home, does not have, uh, is less likely maybe a holiday once a year, that may not even be, you know, if, you, if you send me on a holiday this year, I do it next year, say I can't afford it, I'll understand. But when there's a total neglect, mm -hmm. some, some children are just so selfish, <laughs> self-centered, self all they think about is themselves you know I also have responsibility I have needs I have to do this I have to do that I had needs I had responsibility I had wants when I was when when I denied myself all of this to take, take care, care of you yeah. why just why can't you do it now Mr. Kentebe because really this is me I am I'm so strongly to my belief oh. whatever we may think or agree here and whatever the viewers at home may also agree you know it's just this is where I stand mm -hmm that really, truly and honestly, at 18 years old, you are still with, living with your parents. Mm -hmm. No matter how little, when you now get the break, it's different from, I don't know your source of income, but I know you work, you mm -hmm. do a legitimate mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. No matter how little it is, mm -hmm. let me have some of that little. It may not be, it may not be much. Just the act, the intent True. of yeah. doing it is satisfactory to me. Mm -hmm. But where there is a total neglect, that is where me, I have a problem with. Okay. <laughs> well, let's go back to the issue. We are talking about this to create an awareness. An awareness to help the parents and to help the children. But you have to also remember that, you know, even when you have two, three children, from a very early age, you can tell that they have different characters. So some children are more are generous. Some are more naturally more selfish. So you have to recognize that from a very early age and train all your children to understand the power of giving, of being helpful. It's only at that stage when they get older that they will be able to reprocessate, um, be able to give back to their parents. You understand? So it's, I think in theory, it's nice, but in, 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 in practical, it's a different story. If you're expecting that this child is going to take care of me, then that's when you're going to be disappointed. If you haven't done the early work and you haven't instilled those values, those morals, you know, and the natural caring from an early age. And of course, as you know too, some of your children would step up to the plate sure. and some will not. 
So there are other variables that affect. I also those think type the parents even know the children that would step up. Absolutely. So you know, at the back of their minds, they're like, okay, if this is true, I'm not doing so well. I know I can rely on this person to do this. My question to you, both of you, <laughs> is, you know, some people think that because you're a rich man or a rich woman, you don't have this kind of, you don't share same sentiments as we do. Is, is this a valid point? Because you don't understand what we're talking about. You're rich, you can take care of yourself, you can take care of your family, you can take care of your extended family. So you're not even interested in what the child is going to bring to the table. Is this a valid point? Mr. Kentebe, you just hold on to your answer. Yes. Please keep the question. <laughs> we really quickly have to go on a break. Quick break. When we we'll come back, we'll, we'll come back to you after the break. If you're rich, your some of your your focus is kind of to you're looking at your children actually continuing the wealth. But when you're poor, it's a different story. It's good to let the children realize that regardless of the situation, they should be a blessing to their parents and to humanity. Welcome back. It's the Amazons and we are still talking. Should children be saddled with the responsibility of taking care of their parents at a certain age? Or are the children the retirement plans of the parents? Before we took a break, I posed the question to both of you about you know, the perspective from the rich man or the rich woman who does not expect these things from the children because they can take care of um, yeah, generations after generations. You see parents still take care of their children, their grandchildren, you know, and the other extended families. So is this a valid point that because you are rich, you should not expect anything from your children? Is this a valid point? So who goes first? Um, no, I, I yeah, <laughs> I, well, yeah, I, I, I believe, to be fair, mm. there is a point in that. Mm. Because if you can take care of yourself, if you're rich, your, some of your, your focus is kind of to, you're looking at your children actually continuing the wealth. So you say it's a different focus. You're trying to train them and your expectations that, that they're going to continue either the family business or they're going to make money like you have made money. Mm. But when you're poor, it's a different story. Sometimes you may have made huge sacrifices to educate your children, hoping that this is your investment. So there is clearly a point in that, yeah. Well, um, I, I think I have a slightly different view uh, to that. And my position is this. It's good to let the children realize that regardless of the situation, they should be a blessing to their parents and to humanity. And because it comes with a promise, scripturally and spiritually, you know, it, it does not matter. It's not the size that matters, but the mind, you know, the intent, you understand? So um, let me give you an example. I have in my car now uh, a wristwatch that was given to me by my daughter. You know, this wristwatch that counts the BP and whatever. It's, it's sold for just, I think, 15,000 or something. She knows I can buy it a million times. In fact, it's in the car as I speak now. When I leave here, I'm going to the palms to make sure that, you know, they fix, I mean, it, up. They fix it up. Oh. And you know the joy that comes it's with that? It's a joy. <laughs> I called her yesterday morning to say, Timmy, thanks so very much. I really appreciate this. You know, she knows I can more than afford it. Sure. Sure. But the joy for me, in fact, I said it in Europe, I said, ah, Putting general money. <laughs> you, 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 you get the point. Yeah. I mean, just yesterday, and they, they, they watch us in the car. You know, so, and for her, I know it's a blessing mm -hmm. from God. Sure. You know, so I don't think it's really because you're rich or you are comfortable, you know, that your child should now think, oh, maybe I should do this or that. Mm -hmm. They should. And when they do it to their parents, they also want to do it to other people, sure. you know. So I, I think that is my own viewpoint. Mm -hmm. However, you know, I am very careful to say, yes, even for people that are not so well to do, there is need for the children to do much more. There's no question about it. Because probably they've given all their life, their sacrifice, everything for these children. 
So the children should have a payback time. However, it's always good to be careful, yeah. not to be disappointed. You see, the family mm, is just a small part of a larger society. Yeah. That's right. The family is a society, is the government. Yeah. When we raise our children to be selfish, to be self-centered, we are raising a society that is selfish, that is self-centered. Self Look at the whole mirage of problems that we have in this country today. Those people who are accused of corruption, those people who are stealing the commonwealth of everybody, they are a part of family. Mm -hmm. See, if we train our children to be empathic, to know that, see, I can only, uh, 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 I can only take so much mm -hmm. out of a lot because I have to think of the oh, other person. Yes. Then we will have a sane society. We will have a society that is a blessing to one another. All right, thank you so much for being a part of the program, Mr. Kentibi. It was really nice to yes. have you on the program. My pleasure. Mr. Mm. It's my great thank pleasure. You. Keep being uh, the best friends of your children, yes. and I'll also learn to be the best friend of my children, <laughs> so that you can take care of me. When <laughs> <you're here>. Exactly. <laughs> Yes, like you said, the truth, children would not always be children. And the parents, unfortunately, are parents forever. But remember, honor thy father and thy mother so that your days may be long. Until next week again, my name is Leah Dimoni. Bye for now.